Hello and welcome to a special episode of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is April 8th, 2020. In my usual episodes, I always show you what I'm knitting and crocheting at the moment and I show you what I'm wearing so I have a chance to show you some old things. But as I have things that I've knitted before and I can't wear to show you, uh, I sometimes do these specials. Um, I've done specials in the past about socks and hats and mittens and blankets. But today I want to show you the toys that I've made in the past and um, that I have still access to. So some of them I have kept and some I have given away, but to people who um, borrowed them or gave them back to me so I can show them off today. Yeah, so um, I'll start with some of the oldest um, things I've knitted. And these are animals, um, animal toys knit. Um, and they were designed by Anna Hrakovec. I have no idea how to pronounce that. But she, um, her designs are published under Mochi Mochi Land. So she has loads of wonderful designs. And I think the first one I knit is called Boo the Bat and looks like this. And um, they hang because they're bats and um, they were made out of Hauswolle, a yarn by Wollerödel. It's um, part wool, part acrylic and, um, and I think they look so sweet and I love the the big eyes and there's also a button on one of the wings so you can um, button it up and then they can go to sleep. So the other two are asleep, but if I unbutton them, they wake up. <laughs> and I knit these for my son. And he really liked them and um, I don't think he ever played with them a lot, but he was probably too old when I made them. But um, yeah, he liked them. But when I opened my shop, he said I could have them to show them off in my shop. So these are Boo the Bat in three different colors. And um, yeah, I think they're really funny and I just love to have them on this bamboo stick. And um, yeah, they should have their wings closed when they're hanging because I think they only hang to sleep, don't they? Otherwise they'd be fl flying around <laughs> and they can still peek at what's happening. <laughs> so that's Boo the Bat. And um, I have two nephews. I have three now, but back then it was only two. So um, I knitted two more designs by Anna. And um, the one of them was stackable cats. So if you want to see what stackable cats look like, that's these. And they are really, really funny. Um, my sister usually has either cats or dogs or both. So both kids like cats and dogs. And I thought knitting cats and dogs for them was the right thing to do. I don't remember what the yarn is called. I bought it in a sale. It was um, cheap. It had exactly the colors I wanted. And it's a mix of cotton and silk. So it's not usually something I would use for toys, but... Um, as I said, it was um, for sale and it had the perfect colors. And so they're really soft and squishy. And um, this one, when I just knit the body and I didn't have um, the other parts attached yet, it looked like a brick. <laughs> yeah, so they're pretty old, but the cats still look really nice because my nephew used to keep them on his shelf and looked after them really well. And... Um, yeah, so these are the stackable cats and the next pattern I knit are the pileable pups. So these are the doggies and I knit them for the younger nephew and that's what they look like. <laughs> and I think they're so funny. They're knit with Sienna, a pure wool by Wollerödel in three different colors and then I just um, changed the combination and um, the Good thing was that my younger nephew really played with them. He loved them and he played with them a lot. But
but unfortunately he kept them under his bed for quite some time and as I said they have real cats and dogs and um, yeah so after he got them out of from under his bed they were a bit worse for wear and um, I could uh, practice my darning uh, techniques so they have some battle wounds um, fortunately I still had the original yarn so it's not too obvious but there were two big holes on this one this leg was badly injured and had to be fixed and um, I think that's about it for this one and then this one uh, he seems to have gotten away fairly easily maybe it was just could be that this spot was mended and um, yeah but otherwise he was quite fine but this one had a really bad injury back on on top of his back so there I had to do quite a bit of surgery <laughs> but all of them survived I think the worst thing was when when he gave them to me they were not only um, holes in them but they were really dirty <laughs> and I didn't want to um, uh, fix them while they were that dirty but I was a bit afraid of washing them because I was afraid the holes might get worse so what I did is I just put them in the water and let them soak and then gently squeeze them uh, after I got them out let them dry then I fixed them and then I put them in the washing machine so this is machine washable yarn and I think for toys that's important um, to do to have so these are the pileable pups and um, these are all the patterns that I've knit from Anna from Mochi Mochi Land so far. But I bought several of her patterns and I'm still thinking of knitting up the others as well. And someday maybe I'll get around to doing that. So that was that. I think the second oldest thing. Oh, I'm not quite sure when I made these things, but I'll I'll just show you show you in some some order. Don't know yet. Okay. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you are called Strickeducker. I don't know if you've heard the word before, but um, the designers are quite famous. And it's that book by Arne and Carlos. Arne and Carlos are two guys from Norway, um, knitting des knitwear designers and designers of knit stuff, not just knitwear. And I remember when I was still working for um, Wolle Rödel, a big yarn shop in Germany, um, and we got this book in the shop and I thought, well, I don't need to knit dolls, um, not my thing. But then one day I was bored, there was nobody around, I had nothing to do and I started reading the book. And I was, it's so funny, it's um, really well written, they have lots of nice comments, lots of beautiful pictures and, um, and the ideas they're using, they're just so funny and... Um, and also one of the things I really like about um, the, the way they knit the dolls is um, you don't have, you hardly have to sew anything. So most of it is knit in one piece and you just add um, your knitting onto what you've already done. And it's um, done in a very clever way. So um, when the book was first published in Germany, there was a competition and you were supposed to knit a doppelganger. Um, so you were supposed to knit somebody and then send in the picture of the person you knitted and the doll you made. It didn't have to be yourself, could be just somebody. And um, and then there were going to be prizes. And so I thought, well, I'll knit my son. Um, I'll show you the doll. So my son always wears black clothes. He loves his long black coat and he has long brown hair. So I thought, that's fairly easy to do and I can send in the picture of him and of the doll and that'd be nice. So I knitted my first Strickeducker with the long hair and I even put some some like clasps on the on the coat and he's wearing black trousers and I knit him a, a black t-shirt <laughs> and then I thought it was so fun to do and I really enjoyed knitting um, that doll so I decided I'll knit myself too and I think I was halfway through knitting my own doll when I realized that I couldn't take part in the competition because I was working for Wolle Rödel and they were sponsoring the whole thing so but then 
I'd already have finished um, the second doll and I finished that one too. And I sent in the pictures and I wrote to them, look, I can't um, take part, but I just wanted to show you the pictures. And they were really nice about it. And they wrote me an email back and thanked me for the pictures and said they were so sorry I couldn't win any prizes. And that was really nice. So this is me. I hope you can see that I even put up my hair today. <laughs> And for those of you who watched last week's episode, they might recognize this pullover because the original one uh, I wore last week. Um, I hadn't thought about it, otherwise I might have worn it today as well, but I didn't think about it. So yeah, but that is my doll. It's also a pair of black trousers, but I have colorful um, legs or stockings or tights or whatever. So I can, um, yeah, and I have a t black t-shirt as well. And I also knit a rat pullover. Um, when I had to knit a rat pullover for myself, um, back when I was working at Wollerödel, I made the same pullover, um, a small version of that rat pullover uh, for my doll. And um, that was quite funny. Yeah, so these are my two Stricke Duga dolls that I really like a lot. Yeah, then the next thing I'm going to show you, oh, I can go on with um, another pattern by Anna and Carlos that I knit, and it's their Julekula. These are Christmas, Christmas um, ornaments, decoration. Um, they have a ho whole book of these. I don't have the book. Um, I borrowed it from someone back then and I only ever knitted these four. Um, they, there later was a little booklet with different patterns for these uh, Yulukula and I have that at home so someday I might make more but um, yeah back then I just made these four and um, I think in the book they used red and white for all of them but I did one with red and silver with some glittery yarn just for the fun of it. And it was these um, balls, knitted balls, that um, gave me the idea to do my um, glitter spiral knitted ornaments. Um, because I was thinking that not everybody enjoys knitting with two colors. And I thought if you just used colorful yarn, you could um, get an effect that's um, similar, but easier to do. And um, so I thought of using just some some nice opal yarn and knit them. What's happening here? I just want to put the back. So, um, so that's when I came up with that pattern. I can quickly show you. So these are my Christmas ornaments. This is the first one I knit. That was the prototype to see how it works out. And it has these Christmassy colors and it has the spiral. And I have the um, pattern out in English as well now and then this I think was the second one just to have a different color and a different size and then I did this one because um, I wanted to see what it looks like if I use cotton yarn this is a glitter cotton yarn and then I knit I'm not quite sure whether I did the earrings next or the other one where are my earrings um, so these are my earrings I can wear them as earrings and I have some beads up here and down there and um, and then I knit this one it's the only one that doesn't glitter but that's a 10 gram mini um, Opal, Opal has these mini um, balls of yarn um, and I wanted to see how big you could knit um, this one this ornament with 10 grams and I knit this one and I had a bit left over so I could have done it a bit bigger probably and this is the last one that I knit just um, a few weeks ago and I knit that on camera so there's a video where you can see how I knit this it's only I only recorded that in German but I think um, if you have the English instructions and if you see what I'm doing it should be okay you should be able to to get what I'm doing 
yeah, and then because they were for Christmas and we're going on to Easter, I changed the pattern up a bit and I made these Easter eggs, glitter spiral Easter eggs. So they're not, they're not really toys, but decoration is part of the whole topic today. Yep, so that's that. That was, that was Arnie and Carlos. Now on to the next designer. Um, there's a designer called um, Lydia Tressold. And she designs, or her designs um, go by La Lila La. So that's, if you look for La Lila La on Ravelry, you find loads of her um, patterns. And again, I've bought a lot more patterns than I've crocheted so far. That's crochet now. But the first pattern that I actually did crochet is my black sheep. I just love it. It's so funny. So the original sheep is crocheted with um, um, off-white yarn for for the arms and face and brown yarn for the um, wool but I wanted a black sheep and uh, and the scarf I don't remember whether it's part of the pattern or not but um, mine always has had the red scarf and this is like a hat so you can take that off and the ears are attached to the hat it's really really funny um, it's quite a bit of work it's fairly big so um, I've never really taken the time to make another one of the big um, things, but uh, I really love my black sheep. And then a few years ago, I think two years ago, she came, um, she came up with this book, Beetles, Bugs and Butterflies. And it was first published in English. And I think then in French, and now there's a German translation out. But um, so English is no problem. And then the first thing I crocheted from this book is, oh yeah, it's not the first thing I crochet, but I'll show you the right order. So this is a little egg. And then one day, the inhabitant works its way out and we have a little larvae, I think is the word. And it has to eat a lot and then at some point it gets really, really tired and it makes itself a little bed. This is one of the things I love most about it. And this is the cocoon and it falls asleep. And it sleeps and sleeps and sleeps. And I had to crochet and crochet. And then after some time, ah, there we go. The little guy awakes and comes out of his bed and it has turned into a little ladybug <laughs> and I love them they're so funny and because you can take things on and off kids just love to play with them and I crochet these things with kids so I've had kids as young as six and seven who've um, maybe not crocheted the bug but they all have to start with a, I have to look it up aphid I think is the word um, that's the smallest thing in, in the book and um, that's what every child has to crochet first. So like aphid or aphid. Um, so when they can, can do one of these, then they can go on to crochet one of the other animals. And um, so they look like this. And because you start at the front and you do the face, you have increases, then you have one round of crocheting only into the back loop you have more increases then you have rows without increases then you have decreases and basically you you learn most of the techniques you need for all the other animals with these little guys and you can either put beads as legs or you can just put um some some piece of thread as legs and um, the book tells you that they come in lots of different colors in nature not quite sure pink and purple is one of them <laughs> but I just love playing around with the colors so um, yeah so these two have eyes that I've glued on so they're not um, you can't give them to small children but for bigger ones or grown-ups they're okay 
and these eyes um, are little beads that I sewed on so they would be okay for babies to play with and um, then I crocheted a little caterpillar the head is a bit too big and the hat's a bit little too small I think I changed um, the needle size um, accidentally so but it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be perfect so when the caterpillar is really tired it makes a bed but that bed looks like like a leaf so it looks like this and it sleeps for a long time and then it wakes up and then suddenly it can spread its wings and it's a beautiful butterfly So I really love this book and my aim is to one day crochet all the animals in the book and um, what I usually do is when I have kids here and I teach them how to do these, um, I just crochet along and do something for myself. So this is the little one that I crocheted and this is the, the butterfly and all the others I still have to do. So that's beautiful and lots and lots of fun. Um, that was that, la li la la. Now, another group of animals that I made uh, was designed by Doreen Blask. And uh, she, her designs are called, or she designs them under, she publishes them under Mumpitz Designs. And um, last year, or two years ago, I, I forgot. Anyway, she... Um, she has several designs that when you buy the designs, all the money is donated to, um, to the WWF, the World Wildlife Fund. And uh, when she designed her fourth pattern for them, she um, had a challenge that if you bought all four patterns and knitted them in a certain time and published the picture, you could choose from um, several of her other patterns and you would get them for free. And I thought that was very generous and a very nice idea. And I wanted to um, support the World Wildlife Fund. So I bought all the patterns, I knitted them, published the pictures, and I was allowed to um, choose from her other designs. And I think I haven't knit any of them yet. So I really do have to get around to doing that. I know already know which one I want to knit first. And it's it's a very tiny little something. So I should really make I should make that my Easter cast on. Yeah, that's what I decide now. So hopefully in my next normal episode, I'll show you what I've cast on from Mumpitz Designs by Doreen Blask. So the first pattern that I knit were the elephants. And that was uh, when the neon yarn by Opal was um, just new. I just got that. So I wanted to use it, but I didn't want to make the whole elephant in neon colors. So I used some leftover sock yarn for the body and I knit the, the ears and the and the tail in neon pink and the little baby elephant got neon green ears and tail and these are actually they're knit from the same ball of yarn so it's the same green and the same purple but it's just in a different spot of the of the ball. Um, the opal color um, yarns often have long color repeats so they look different but they're actually knit from the same color so that's the elephants then I can't remember in what order I knit them but I'll show you the penguins because the penguins and the elephant have um, there's a variation for a bigger and a smaller animal in the pattern so that's why I knit two so that's um, adult penguin and that's baby penguin so the colors are different and the size is different and they look a little bit like balls. <laughs> it makes it even more funny, I think. Yeah, but I really, really like them. And the patterns are really well written and it was a lot of fun to knit them. Then I have the little lion. I think the lion was the last pattern she published. I think it was when she published this one that she... Um, uh, did the challenge um, yeah very funny and then maybe one of my favorites is the whale oh by the way I knit 
the elephants were knit from sock yarn, but the other animals are knit in cotton yarn. It's the Katan yarn by Schachenmeyer, pure cotton. And this little bit of fluff is something else. It's like a novelty yarn. Um, yeah, but I just needed just a little something to show his breathing. <laughs> yeah, so that's the whale. And these are the challenge animals. Blah, nah, it doesn't work. <laughs> okay, and then on to the last designer I'm going to show today. And that's Sarah Shearer from Imagine Landscapes. And I'm sure all of you know about her gnomes, especially if you've seen um, any other of my um, episodes. I think I've shown all the gnomes before because um, I started knitting them after I started my podcast, I think. Anyway, so the first pattern, I'll show you, I don't show you, I'll show you, I'll just show them. This was the first pattern I bought. This is my favorite gnome, still. Maybe she'll come up with another gnome I like more, but so far this is my favorite gnome. It's the first pattern I bought, and I think it's the Here We Gnome Again pattern. And uh, the first time I saw the picture, I just fell in love with it, and I knew I had to have it. I love the, the cables. Um, on the body and on the hat and I love the beard and it's just so fun so that was the first pattern that I bought and then I did knit it for a long time but because um, I bought the pattern and I was um, following her on uh, Facebook and checking her out on Ravelry I don't know how I learned about it but then one day she came out uh, with the announcement that she was going to do a mystery gnome so I bought that pattern that was the second one I bought and um, and then I went on holiday and I forgot to pack some yarn to do the mystery gnome. But then the first clue appeared and I knew I wanted to knit it. So I used uh, one skein of yarn that I was knitting socks with. And I just used the other end of the ball and I started knitting the hat of the gnome. So that was the socks I was knitting. And then when I was home, um, I added the leaf from another um, ball of yarn. And then this was the first mystery gnome I knit. That's the spring gnome. This is Natalie Gnome de Plume, I think. I don't remember. But I wanted to have her as a dark-skinned gnome because she loves to be in the garden. And um, yeah, it has this leaf-like pattern and looks a bit like buds. And um, yeah, this was, I think, mostly knit with leftover yarn and uh, really like it and then she announced she was going to do another mystery gnome um no yeah i did all the mystery gnomes that she's published so far but i think the next one i knit after i knit this one was from the pattern of here we gnome again <coughs> but in different colors because my son said he would like to have a gandalf looking gnome so we call him gnandalf and uh, so he picked the colors, he told me, in the books, not in the movies, but in the books, he's supposed to have a blue hat, a gray cloak, a silver scarf, and a white beard. So he came and picked the yarns, and I knit Grandalf. And at first, I just knit the hat the way this hat is knit, but then my son said, it's a, it's a um, wizard, he needs a brim on his hat. So I had to improvise a brim. And my son's really happy with that. So this is the grey that he picked, the blue yarn for the hat, the silver scarf, <laughs> and the white beard. So these <clears throat> were knit from the same pattern, but in different yarn weights. So this is fingering weight, and this is worsted weight. So it's like double the thickness. Um, and I just love them. I just love them. I think with this one, I forgot one of the pattern repeats in the hat. I think it should have been longer, but it's okay. My son didn't complain, and I think nobody else will notice. So the next mystery gnome was the autumn gnome. Yeah, it must have been autumn. And that's this one. 
And um, it was quite funny to, to have these three spikes going up and at first not knowing what they were meant for, but um, they're just really funny. And what you can do is you can kind of braid them like this. And that makes it look like a more normal gnome hat. And it's so funny. But the scandal with this one was it didn't have a beard. It just had the scarf, a huge nose. And the funniest things are the pockets that you knit onto the body. And you can put the hands in. Yes, I love that. And with this one, I bought the yarn from Moonchaff. Uh, she was one of the dyers who'd um, seen the gnome beforehand and they'd put sets together. Um, and when I was in Dusseldorf to a yarn festival, I um, looked at the sets and I, I picked one set, but then I changed two colors. <laughs> really funny. So the pink was in the set and then there was a white yarn that had a bit of yellow and green I think in it so I changed it to this white yarn with a tiny bit of pink in it and then this blue in the original set was a lighter blue um, which I liked as well but I also liked the darker one and then basically I decided for this one because it was called Totoro and I love the movie Totoro uh, so I wanted to have the yarn that's called Totoro and I knit this one and because I had yarn left um, from all three balls, even though there were only 20 gram balls, I still had leftover yarn. And then uh, when she published her pattern, um, I forgot what it was called, but it's teeny tiny gnomes. Um, I used the leftover yarn to knit this one. I had one that was slightly bigger, but I just gave it away the other day. And then the tiniest one are these. And again, I put them on earrings so I can wear gnome earrings. Yep, so same colors, just turned around. <laughs> love them, love them. Now the next mystery gnome was um, the winter gnome and uh, she um, announced that there was going to be color work and said that the first two colors should have a good contrast. And this time I went with Voldakel yarn, but it wasn't a set, it was just two colors I had. And one of them, um, so the first two colors are these two colors. The light one is by Voldakel, and the dark one is just uh, opal um, single color yarn. And then this color is also Voldakel yarn. Um, it's that color as well. Um, that's Aquaman and the light one is Techno Girl, I think. So um, he wears a pullover. So there's even some color work underneath the pullover. But then um, he had this really funny beard and he was basically done, but there was still one clue missing. And then the last clue was this pullover that you can knit and you can take it off and you can put it on. So um, yeah, he could even change and have a second pullover something, maybe. <laughs> yeah, so I really love that one as well. And it has a very, 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 very long hat uh, with lots of patterns and uh, yeah, very funny. So I know there's going to be at least one more mystery gnome, maybe even two, I'm not quite sure, but I'm pretty sure that whatever she comes up with, I will just have to buy and knit. Yeah, so I think that was all of the, oh, I'll just quickly show you my, my cushions. Um, there's um, this tiny little star that I knit just for fun. It's just um, not even a re real toy. I, you could put it on a Christmas tree or whatever. And it's the same pattern that I knit this cushion. Um, that's Voldakel yarn again. And uh, I showed that on my podcast before when I was knitting it, but I've never shown this star. This is Opal um, Hundertwasser uh, color. So Hundertwasser is a, was an artist and Opal dyes yarn with colors that uh, are inspired by his paintings. And these are the only colors that they keep uh, reproducing. All the other colors they do and then they disappear and they make new ones. But these colors, they just keep coming back. And I knit this 
um, star cushion just before I opened my shop. And if you look at my logo, the the dot on the eye from Kiko, it's a picture of this star. So that's quite funny. <laughs> what you can do with one pattern. Okay, so that was it. I hope you enjoyed seeing all my toys and 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 dolls and whatever I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you have had a nice time over Easter and um, wish you all the best and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!